calls and service if I didn't pick up on some patterns. So I want you to come join me live every Wednesday on YouTube at noon Eastern, where I take your questions live on how to be a better salesperson, how to sell more, how to lead a team every single Wednesday, noon Eastern on YouTube. And we're live for another segment of the Ass Jazz Show, live here on YouTube and Facebook. Just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching live right now, and thank you if you're watching the recording. Today's Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. I know it's been a crazy year. Some would say unprecedented. But at the end of the day, if you're watching live or if you're watching the recording right now, you have a lot to be grateful for. And so um, I wanted to start off by also thanking my team, the, the REC team. We just placed uh, for the fifth year now in the top three in Canada for gross commissions. So that's how many... I, uh, uh, how much commission we made in sales. It's obviously something that uh, uh, is a metric that you want to look at. We ended up number two in the country out of 18,000. I know a lot of my team watches the recordings. And so big, big shout out to them and a big congratulations to them. We ended up with $6.4 million uh, in commission um, and also number two in the country for how many homes and condos were sold. We did a little over and helped a little over 500 people this year and so just a big big thank you for all the support from our clients year over year for 15 years in real estate they've been helping us if you don't know who i am i'm jazz takar i i've co-founded the real estate uh, uh, uh rec team in rec canada with my business partner we have 40 real estate agents we have 11 support staff and right now, uh, uh, like, look, my cup is full. I've been saying this a lot. You might have even see, heard it in the intro. Uh, my cup is full right now. And being in sales for 25 years, sales and service, I want to give back. And, 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 and one of the ways I want to try to give back is through a show like this. And so drop me your sales team building business questions in the live i got my boy janae juju sweetness with me here what's going on juju how you doing boss i know you're going to be asking me a lot of questions that are coming in from the live as well as from instagram and 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 linkedin all the stuff that we got throughout the week if you're not part of my text community i would love for you to be part of it it really is the best place to get a hold of me ask me your questions directly like if you're in sales if you're a business owner if you're an entrepreneur and you're going through something like right now, you can ask live or you can just text me at 647-372-0126. Juju, I don't hear you yet. Yeah, Do you want to test that again? Mic check, mic check. Yeah, I don't hear Do Juju, anyone? Steven. You want to try You want to try that again? Maybe it's here. Mic check, mic check. Ba, ba, ba. Mic check, mic check. One, I'm two, three. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, mic check. If you guys hear Juju, give us a thumbs up, but go ahead and ask the questions, brother. Okay, so the first question came in from LinkedIn DM. Okay. And this person asked, uh, being a self-employed salesperson, how important is a saving strategy? Can you break down your personal saving strategy? Yeah, so ever since, uh, look, I was in car sales before I got into real estate, and um, what, I, what I used to do back in car sales is actually – save 50% of my income. Now, I was living with my parents at that time, so it was very easy for me to do that. Mm -hmm. But what it allowed me to do is when I got into real estate, like when you're in full commission sales, you gotta be prepared. In my opinion, you should have a minimum of six months of carrying costs before you get into a business, before you get into uh, uh, sales, like full commission. Why? Because there's going to be months where you don't get paid. And so for me now, I'm probably, I hover around anywhere from 15 to 17%. I know it's an odd number, but I, I, I save. I pay myself first. Look, everyone's going to get their money. They're all going to ask you for their money. CRA, the mortgage, 
the lender, um, uh, uh, the phone bill, the internet bill, the utility companies. If you don't get into the habit of saving yourself, uh, uh, saving right off the top, I can tell you, you're going to run into a lot of problems. And so the way to do it, the easiest way to do it is just set up a direct withdrawal that if you get paid every other week um, or if you're in commission, uh, if you're in sales and you get paid commission, the second you have a dollar that comes in, minimum, minimum, you got to save 10 cents. Take it right off the top. Okay, take it right up. Pay yourself first because if you don't get in the habit of paying yourself first from like uh, the perspective of 10%, I hear it a lot, which is, you know what? When I make $100,000, i am going to save the $10,000. Mm-hmm. If you're not, if you don't start with the habit of saving 10 cents from a dollar, you will not save 10000 out of 100000 It's It's... It's like brushing your teeth. You have to do it every single day, twice a day, if you can, three times a day. But saving is something that you have to get into the habit of. I've always done a minimum of 10%. I'm now in my life where I'm doing closer to about 15 to 17%. And from a tactical standpoint, do you recommend just having a separate savings account? So you yeah, don't definitely, have yeah. So like what I use here in Canada, I use um, Tangerine just to, just to get it saved. I don't really let too much money sit in my bank accounts mm-hmm. anyway because I'm a big believer you got to get money moving, right? Like money sitting in your bank account is not going to do you really well. Like you got to you got to get it into the market so it can grow. It's why I'm obviously I'm biased. I put it into real estate. Mm-hmm. People make millions and billions of dollars in stocks and and other businesses as well. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't really know stocks and so it's not something that I invest in. Mm-hmm. But right away open up a separate account don't use your use that account to buy stuff or or pay your bills you take the 10 percent, the 10 cents out of the dollar and that goes into a separate account mm-hmm. very easy perfect uh the second question came in from the text community and this person asked okay. is it possible to scale too quickly when do you know it's the right time to scale your company and what was the biggest mistake you made while scaling your company yeah look i mean is it is it uh, uh possible to scale too quickly for sure um you got to be careful right uh, uh i've always lived by look success can kill and what i mean by that is and and what is meant by that is the fact that if you grow too quickly you you, you you're not going to be prepared as well especially if you weren't saving, going back to the original question, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not prepared, you, 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 you're gonna run into problems. And so what happens is sometimes we, we wanna get more leads in sales. We wanna pick up more leads, but what ends up happening is that you haven't figured out the foundation of fulfilling those leads. And so be very careful from that perspective of always wanting more leads. Getting leads is not actually that tough. I can teach you how to get a ton of leads but it's what you're gonna do with those leads. And so scaling, the biggest mistake that I kind of made personally was I didn't scale. So I'm gonna get pulled by both ends here. I didn't scale as quickly as I should have. And, And I knew that because I was running into problems where I was bringing in leads Mm -hmm. and I wasn't able to fulfill them. I should have grew uh, even quicker than I have because I could have picked up on more people. All all you really need, in my opinion, to scale is people Mm -hmm. because you can get a lot more done. Right, right. Uh, From LinkedIn DM, I'm a real estate agent and I recently had a poor customer service experience with a client. It was 100% my fault and I take full responsibility, but how do I build back my reputation? Well, look, I mean, the fact that you already know that it was your fault, that you're taking 100% accountability. Um, like, I don't know this person personally, um, but I can tell you that he or she's already on the right track, mm-hmm. right? I, I mean, I could tell by how the question was posed. Um, how do you get your reputation back? I don't know the exact, like, w- what happened in terms of the co- like the poor customer service, but mm-hmm. I, I as quickly as you possibly can, get in front of it. Call the client, call the customer, apologize but make something happen fix it fix what the problem is and if you can't um you gotta look at the end of the day if you lied and that like if you're saying oh it was my fault and and i'm taking full accountability but you lied you probably now lost at least 50 percent of the equity Mm -hmm. like in any relationship right Right. like juju if i lie to you a couple of times i'm going to start to lose the equity in our relationship Mm -hmm. right um and in, in in our friendship and so and so 
you got to get in front of it as quickly as you possibly can. And I think, look, I mean, in general, people love comeback stories, right? And so there's nothing wrong with making mistakes as long as um, you recognize it, you you let the customer know as you quick uh, as quickly as possible. You try to fix it, um, and then over time, just know, like, look, we. At the start of this show today, I said we helped a little over 500 people. Were all my 500 clients happy? No, because we did 500 transactions. Mm -hmm. Like, things go wrong, things happen, right? Um, but we got in front of every single one of those problems. Um, and sometimes you have to throw money at the problem. I mean, that's, that's always something that you can do. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to take time to build that reputation up. But mm -hmm. be okay with making mistakes and understanding that most people are very forgiving. All right. Uh, from Instagram DM, can you talk about the importance of networking in a macro sense? And how has your networking strategy changed from the start of your career? Um, well, look, I mean, 2020 in itself, uh, we've always done events, right? And for 15 years that I've been doing real estate, um, we've always done live events. Mm -hmm. And so that's where our networking um, happened. Um, I want to answer the first part of the question in terms of a, a, a mark, um, from a macro perspective. You're in the people business. Let me take it one level higher. In sales, I'm going to try to help y uh, uh, you as much as possible for anybody who's watching live or watching the recording in terms of tips and tactics. But all that means shit if you don't have anybody to talk to. Mm -hmm. So you could be the best closer in the mirror. You could practice scripts. You can be an amazing graphic designer and an amazing videographer. Like if you're a salesperson, you still have those skills. But if you have no one to talk to mm -hmm. about your product or service, you're done. Like mm -hmm. that's what this business, that's what sales is all about. It's about people. So networking meeting people is the utmost importance right in fact in fact even the product and service you that you're selling you can that's actually easy to learn mm -hmm. right I, I've, I've said it before like when i used to sell cars I, I didn't know anything about cars when i got started over time i started to learn i used to speak to, with the mechanics i used to go even back then go on youtube or mm -hmm. whatever like find out as much as I possibly can to learn the product and service. But the most important part was the people, meeting people. And so going to the second part of your question, we used to do a lot of live events. Obviously in 2020, couldn't do that anymore. So what do we do? We do live webinars. It was, it has redefined our business. Like, look, I don't know, in 2021, yes, we're gonna do live events when we're allowed to, mm -hmm. but we're going to broadcast those live events because sure. I can only get 50, 60, 70, 150, 200 people into a room. It gets costly as well. Mm -hmm. But now I can broadcast to the world just like this show. So right. how, how has it changed? I'm doing more things digitally now mm -hmm. because I can stay in this room. I can sell from this room. I can get on phone calls, but I can also network now t with people right across the world. And so for me, the biggest change was doing it digitally. Right. And we have to get ready for that. Like, I know so many li like, like, like uh, seminar companies, um, guys and gals that were doing all live events, and they haven't pivoted yet, right. right? And so you have to find a way to get comfortable in front of the camera now and do webinars and, and network, network through like a digital landscape. Mm -hmm. and. Do you know how many networking uh, groups there are on Facebook? Like sales groups, entrepreneur groups. Like you can you can find these people very easily. You just got to do the work to do. You just got to go out and 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 try to bring as much value as you possibly can to somebody else. And just a follow-up question on that. Uh, when you started your sales career, was your networking approach very sporadic or did you kind of ha have like a self goal where you would be like, I'm going to talk to one person in my industry per week? No, or so, one a day? so my, my till this day has been I need to speak to at minimum, minimum 10 people a day, right? Minimum 10 people a day. So even back then, the goal was always to try to talk to 
10 people a day. And out of those 10, are those all clients? Or are there people in your industry sprinkled in there as well? Well, I think it's everything, right? Everything. Like, like, and for me, when I, when, when I started in real estate 15 years ago, like real estate's a cool product in that sense, right? That, 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 that our service that you provide. Because A, real estate's like probably the most watched thing on the internet, maybe one in one A with porn, right? And then, so everybody wants to know more about real estate. Right. Everybody needs real estate. They need a place to live, rent or buy or invest. And so for me, it was quite easy, be, quite easy because I knew everyone I spoke to knew somebody else as well. So the average person knows 200 people. So you don't need to go too wide with this, and I'll explain what I mean by that. The way that I've always thought about networking, till this day, I could do a lot of, a lot of deals in any business in any, with any product or service if I just know 200 people. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Because if the average person knows 200 people, my network now is 40,000. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how I've always looked at it, but you gotta take care of your 200 people because then they'll hopefully introduce you to their 200 people. Uh, from LinkedIn DM, what would you say is your smartest and dumbest investment decision? Um, my smartest decision was to, uh, from an investment perspective, was to invest in myself. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the dumbest one that I did is not do it at an earlier age. I, I started to learn about personal development at the age of 23. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I got introduced to um, an audio CD, Anthony Robbins audio CD. Um, and I made fun of that exact person and anyone who would listen to something like that when I was 17. Right. Um, to add to that, one of my other dumb investments, dumb investment decisions was selling a property that I had. Um, I should have I should have kept it, done a refinance. That property is worth, like I bought that one for $285,000 um, and, and we sold it for $400,000, but it's probably worth 900 now. Why'd you sell it? Uh, I just didn't have the education. Yeah. I didn't have the education. And if I, if, if, if I think back, I probably didn't have the gut for it. I didn't have the stomach for it. Mm -hmm. um, because I just I've never done it before, so it's just like anything else, right? Like, and now that I have the experience of refinancing so uh, so many of my properties, like, and we were talking about it yesterday, right? Yeah. Juju, like, uh, not that I refinance every single property at every single opportunity, but I'm okay to like do it tomorrow. It's right. not a big deal for me. I, I you, confidence it comes from experience, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why you hear us talk a lot about just get started with stuff, right? Um, but definitely my smartest decision um, was investing in myself. One of the reasons why I don't buy as many properties um, that I get on my, on my table now is because I'm investing in myself. And, and what does that mean? Yes, listening to podcasts, less, yes, um, watching YouTube videos, yes, reading books, listening to audio books. But we just picked up, I don't know, Stephen, what was this, like close to 10 grand of worth of equipment that we did? Yeah, in a month and a half. In a month and a half, okay? In, in a month and a half, we spent 10 grand on brand new equipment, okay? That's investing in myself. I, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, like, I know what the vision is, and I need to do that. I need to make sure that I, I buy new equipment, and then I'm investing in people. You know, I was speaking to Nikki a couple of days ago, and I was like, Nikki, like, if there's a course, or maybe it was Luke, sorry. Luke, if there's a course on ads that you need to learn, Go, buddy. I'll pay for the course. Right. That's investing in myself. That's also investing in my people because Luke might not be with me forever, right? And so by far, smartest decision, smartest investment was investing in myself. Got it. Uh, from the text community, I manage a family-owned restaurant and I've really struggled this year financially because of the COVID restrictions. Any tips on how to recover my business in 2021? Um, look, I, if, if it's still in lockdown, um, and, and you can't have people come into the restaurant, you gotta find a way um, to get the food. Get the food into people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would be all over the place in terms of, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately because I know a lot of restaurant owners and I'm seeing a lot of restaurants close as well. Um, but if it was me, um, and not that 
these guys and gals are not haven't been fighting um, I'm sure they have like fighting to keep it going um, but look I, I I would be all over the digital landscape okay um, doing vlogs teaching people how to cook so if if your restaurant is 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 the best jerk chicken in in the city I'm gonna teach people I'm gonna showcase my restaurant the kitchen me making the food teaching people how to do it themselves because I also know not everyone has the time to make jerk chicken or they don't even care to do it but make it entertaining get your name out there and then obviously the door dashes the skip the dishes and the uber eats maybe have even like deliver the food yourself you know get a kid Get a kid that just got their, their license. Make them a delivery person. Maybe you don't want to cut in the Ubers because I don't know what they charge, like restaurant owners, yeah. but maybe you get the food and de uh, you deliver the food yourself. Um, and, and unfortunately, unfortunately, you had to shut down. And, and I just, I, like I hope, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that uh, at least the cities wherever you're listening to this and watching this, um, the, the city officials allow for like fucking 50% capacity of, in the restaurant because I just don't see how like this, co like how, how, this, how this virus is being passed if at least you're getting 50, like 50% 50 capacity. You've got to get these restaurants open again. But if you're watching and you have a restaurant, um, just get onto a whiteboard uh, you can't see my office here, um, but but we have tons of whiteboards in here, and just continuously brainstorm to get your name out there. From te from the tech community, what are your thoughts on taking outside investment or taking out loans when scaling your business? Um, look, I'm not against it. I I have it myself. Um, I I have been um, in the need of it in the past. But uh, I got myself out of it. I just sold more. I just worked harder. Um, but some businesses, you, 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 need to, you need the money. And so I understand that. Um, just be careful. Um, know that you got to pay it back. Um, and it does fuck up your credit if you don't. And you don't want to get that reputation of not paying, paying back uh, uh, loans and stuff. Or even, even if you're borrowing from mom and dad. Like, you know, like... I, I come from the generation, like, when you took a dollar from mom and dad, you paid that back. Mm -hmm. You know, now sometimes I hear stories of people borrowing money from mom and dad. They're not paying them back. It's just like, God's oh, free money. And so, look, um, if you're in business and you need to, you, you need to get a loan, um, nothing wrong with that. That's why, they're, that's why the banks do it. Just understand what you're getting yourself into. Uh, from LinkedIn DM. Do you or will you ever work with any business consultants or coaches? And is there any value in investing in consulting services? Yes, definitely. Um, look, I mean, the, the, the best athletes in the world, uh, Kobe, Kobe's game changed when Phil Jackson came into his world. Jordan's uh, game changed when, when Phil Jackson came into his world. Um, Tiger Woods, till this day, still has a coach, right? right. And so um, definitely, um, I would suggest... Did I? No, mm -hmm. I didn't. Um, why? Because for me, sales is something I've been doing since I was six years old. Right. Right. There's not many people that that when I got to when I got into real estate, like there wasn't many people, or even into car sales, there it was going to be tough for someone to really teach me the basics mm -hmm. that that were needed. I had mentors that were teaching me business and teaching me customer service yeah. but in terms of like one-on-one -on -one coaches i've never had one but i definitely see the value in them and if you had unlimited access to capital and unlimited access to any person you wanted to work with is there someone you would want to use as a consultant from for where you're at now in your business life um as a consultant uh, yeah a consultant. i don't know i don't know man um First and foremost, I don't have unlimited cash, so I, my 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 brain never even goes there. Right. I get that asked question a lot from a real estate perspective too. Like, if you had unlimited cash, well, I don't have freaking unlimited <laughs> cash, so I don't think about that. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's probably a couple of consulting firms from a digital marketing uh, perspective that I would look at, um, like Vayner, Gary Gary V's uh, 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 Vayner Media, mm -hmm. his outfit. Um, they've obviously done really really well. Um, 
And that's it. I mean, look, there's so much, there's so much information now. And I saw, I, I saw an Instagram picture or a meme or whatever it's called uh, earlier today. College, it said college equals podcast plus YouTube. <laughs> right? And so, like, whatever you really want to learn, you could learn yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, just, you, it depends on if you're that person. Like, I wanted to learn how to do this live. Right. So, even before I came to the Stevens and, and, and um, uh, the Tylers of the world and started to put it out there, I did four, eight, like, probably at least ten days, call it. 10 days acute like i'm talking about eight hours a day for 10 days of research on how i might how, how could it be done am i going to be good at it and comfortable with it and what like how is my team going to be able to then i brought it to the guys and said hey guys i have this idea can this be done and that's like so i learned it first because that's just in my nature right now if you're not that person then then you might you might need to invest into a coach right away. Right. But no, wow, there is so much information out there for free already. Mm -hmm. uh, from the text community, how important is the location of where you work? What are the best cities to work in if you are a sales-oriented person? Where there's a, the most people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one of the reasons I love being born and raised in Toronto. Um, so grateful. You know, my parents landed from India in 1972 four in Edmonton and my cousins are still there and one of them's always watching these live shout out to uh, 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 Nav um, and my father after maybe six months realized that there was no jobs like there wasn't enough jobs for him um, and so he flew to Toronto and I'm so <laughs> glad that he came here because that's when I was born well I was born in 1981 um, and we settled here and we have I think it's in the greater Toronto area that's 75 kilometer radius or 50 mile radius for our American friends um, there's 6.6 .6 million people right and so in sales I'm a big believer of the of the of the theory which is principles of plenty when you have a lot of files active files when you have a lot of clients that you're working with when one or five drop off for whatever reason not qualified not ready don't like your service there's still a, like there's so many more people so i don't get hung up on all the no's that i get because mm -hmm. i know i'm just a yes is coming excuse me around the corner and so um yeah uh, look i mean there's a reason people go to new york la Texas, Toronto, Vancouver, Hong Kong, Shanghai. Like, th th that's why there's just so many people there, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're able to sell a little bit easier because of the principles of plenty. From a business perspective, do you have any resolutions for the new year? Um, no. Um, 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 I don't really do a lot of New Year's resolution stuff. Um, today's December 30th, and... You know, tomorrow's going to be December 31st and then it's January 1st. I know it goes from 2020 to 2021, but I'm not going to change anything. Um, are, 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 are we going to double down on stuff? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, are we going to try to make changes in some places? Yes, but that's not because the, the calendar year is changing. Um, that's just because I know where there's holes in my business and I'm going to try to plug them. I also know that there's going to be holes in my business forever and ever. And ever. Mm -hmm. There's going to be holes in what who I am as a person forever. And so what does, for me, the calendar change doesn't mean much. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, so, so I'm not going to be like, I'm going to try this on January 1st. Right. No, I've been trying it in the past already. Or I also know that I'm going to make probably changes. I'm going to, I'm going to decide something on January 8th, and then I'm probably going to change it on February 1st because it's just what happens you got to pivot right fuck 2020 march 13th 2020 shit was different than march 14th when the lockdown happened you know what i mean so like you got to be prepared for that nothing in in terms of uh the new year's resolutions man got it uh from linkedin dm how do i stand out in an interview process um like be prepared mm -hmm. first and foremost um 
the amount of people that I've interviewed and they didn't know I had a YouTube page. Right. You know I knew I mean? that, though. Sorry? I knew that. You knew that? Yeah. But when you sat here with yeah, me, yeah. It, like, I knew you knew almost everything that I was up to. Yeah, yeah. So I knew that you were prepared. Mm -hmm. Then, and I said be prepared about the, the company that you're going to, right? Um, and the product that they have and the service that they provide. And then I would try to find a way to stand out, like to answer your question how to stand out, find a way that you can bring value. So see if there's some empty space, mm -hmm. like empty, like uh, when, when I mean empty space, I mean white space, like in their business, in their service, and try to provide that to them in the interview. You might get somebody across the table that that is pissed off because you're trying to, like they might take it like you're trying to show them what to do, mm -hmm. but you might not want to work for that person anyways, right? Like right. if that comes up and they're not actually being helpful, um, if they're not actually being uh, uh, like if they if they don't think that what you're doing is being uh, being helpful, mm -hmm. then you might not want to work there. Let's take one more question. Can I ask a quick follow? up Hundred percent to that one. Uh, is there a fine balance between being confident and being cocky in an interview process? Hundred percent, I think there is. Yeah. Uh, and um, how do you find that balance? Look, I think it's 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 one of those things that you just um, you got to feel it out. Every situation is different. Um, I, I might come across to some as borderline cocky. I know my intent is not that. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is. I'm quite confident, and I become more and more confident because of the people around me. Um, but I don't know how you're... Like, you might take it as cockiness, Juju, mm -hmm. and Steven might take it as confidence. Get what I'm saying? So I know that there's that difference. So I'm just I'm just being myself. Like I'm gonna be myself. If you're cocky by nature and you fucking know you're <laughs> cocky, then then you're oh, gonna no. come across that. Yeah. You're gonna come across like that, and you gotta deal with the consequences. Right, right, right. Uh, last one from LinkedIn DM. At times I feel like I spread myself out too thin. Do you have any tips for efficiency and overall time management? Um, overall time management, um, get as fast as, for me, the, what worked really, really well for me, and I hope everyone can um, understand and I hope everyone likes the fact that I'm only going to give you answers that I know the answers to and what I did, because that's the only thing I can really tell you. I had someone else be in control of my calendar. I found it very tough for myself. I was self-aware, and so the question um, as it was posed is, is actually great self-awareness that sometimes you might spread yourself too thin. That's knowing, you need to know when you're spreading yourself too thin, and is that okay? Because you know what? I think a lot of people would look at what I do and say, you spread yourself too thin, but I thrive in this. Mm -hmm. I thrive in it. I thrive in a mess on this desk when we're like launching a project, I need things to be really messy. I need music on. You guys come in every day and I'm like, hey, let's put on some music. I like, the like, f for some it might be distraction. For me, it's not. Like, I like all the busyness and the kerfuffleness. I also like the fact that I am up to a lot of things. We have our real estate business that we're running. We have merch that's coming out. We have a course that's coming out. We have, um, you know, I have my personal life as well. Within the business of real estate, I mean, there's 40 real estate agents we have, 11 support staff. There's always stuff happening. Mm -hmm. And so I like that I got a lot of balls that I'm juggling. And mm -hmm. if one of them drop, it's okay. I still got five that I'm juggling. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's, you got to know yourself. Figure it out for yourself what you're okay with, 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 what you're not okay with. And then B, in terms of time management, what worked well for me is hiring an assistant and having him manage my calendar because I'm also accountable to him. Like if I, if I, um, if I, mush, if I move a lot of appointments in my calendar, Luke, Luke's going to be like, Jazz, what the heck, man? It, what's going on? Like we've been, it's taken us so much time to, to book these things, right? Mm -hmm. And so I like that I'm also accountable to Luke. And, and and I hold him also accountable to manage my time. Sounds good. That was the best. Awesome. Guys, have an amazing start to 2021. I appreciate everyone's support throughout this year and, like, moving forward. I know you guys always give me the feedback. And, look, 
Give me the good stuff, the bad stuff, the ugly stuff. I can handle it. It's how we're going to get better. I love, love the constructive criticism. And even if it come, even if it's coming from a bad place, look, we put ourselves out there. Just get it out there. We, It's how we're going to get better. I can't say that enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have an amazing start to 2021. Happy New Year. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Juju. I appreciate you guys. Love you. I'd be an idiot after 25 years in sales and service if I didn't pick up on some patterns. So I want you to come join me live every Wednesday on YouTube at noon Eastern, where I take your questions live on how to be a better salesperson, how to sell more, how to lead a team every single Wednesday, noon Eastern on YouTube.